Hey everyone, Eric here from Netflix. So another video for you guys today. It's a beautiful Thursday morning. It's morning still. It's like almost 11 and we're doing videos because that's what we do in this channel, right? We do a lot of repairs, do data recoveries, do fun things here. And we got another fun one in today. Um, but hope you guys are doing well. Um, if you are, please leave a like, man. That really does help us a lot too. Today we got this uh, USB in. It's a SanDisk USB and it's bent. So bent USBs is like, oh yeah, we made a bunch of them on the channel already. If you guys are interested, you can go ahead and check them out. They're usually a little bit different on how they work. This one's clearly bent, damaged. When you have these in general, usually there's there's a four pin connection, maybe a nine pin connection. I think this is USB 3.0. So usually you get uh, more like nine pins on there and the pads are the connections to the pins that connect to the USB that's inside here, right? So this has to connect to something and obviously the head is just the head here and then there you'll see those little pins inside metal inside there and then you also have a connection to the main pcb which communicates with the controller the, com the controller communicates to the nand so when we have something like this uh, we can work on them in multiple ways uh, we do for usbs or even ssds we can do um, we can do flash data recovery too so working directly with the nand itself there if you guys are interested you should go ahead and check that out we have a few on the channel um, we also have the controller that we can work with directly if we need to I'll replace them. Um, you just solder job there and also stuff like this where we do um, pad fixes for them um, to recover data and then also trace uh, damage fix is usually the case when you have something this bad, this obvious, right? Sometimes it can be slightly lifted if it was a little bit of a knock, but if you have a bent, usually something got totally lifted there. So for this, what we would need to do is we need to open it up. We need to take a look because there's not much we can really do for here because it's obviously it's bent, right? So let's go ahead, open it up and take a look. So we removed it and we see, look at that, right? That's why it's bent. So it's bent there at that angle. It's a little bit cracked there. Um, something like this, we want to take a look more under the microscope because we're going to see it better. Make sure um, uh, pads are intact there, but usually the inside of this usually gets a bit damaged. Let's go into the microscope and take a look further. A lot of times when there is any type of trace line damage, where the trace lines are pretty much here, so like this pin, you see this is the line that goes there, it's very obvious. And if this gets lifted up because they're using any type of physical damage, then what you're gonna have, have to do is we have to recreate that trace line again, and that's a lot more work for it. But the good thing is that the pads look to be healthy, which is fantastic. That's the best thing you wanna see for one of these. Um, especially for that but this one look it looks a little slightly lifted so that obviously is a problem because it's not making a full direct contact with it there so we need to at least make sure that if we just let's we can flex it up and touch it and see if that's going to do it otherwise we need to get a donor head if you have a problem there um, because maybe it was plugged in and then you have power going to it maybe you can short what's what's called the controller the controller is this this is where the pads connect to this is where the head connects to the pads and then the pads connect to uh, the trace lines. The trace lines connect to uh, like other areas here. You can have like capacitors, resistors, you have anything else. And then right, then you have a main controller here, which is your SanDisk controller. Um, sometimes that may need to get required for replacement. Depends on what your problem is exactly. And the worst case scenario is you flip it over here and you do a recovery based on this. This is the NAND chip. This is a lot more difficult to do a NAND based recovery on it. Um, usually if there is a problem with the, with the controller or if, if um, even if you can't find a donor controller or if there's just some other issue that's not being able to be read correctly, you can try reading directly from here. Now it's difficult to replicate exactly what a controller does. So doing that is a lot more difficult, it does require special tools that we actually do have here because we have flash for our data recovery tools and we also do have uh, the monolith spider one. If you guys are interested in that, you go ahead and check it out. Subscribe always for those ones. But let's go ahead, let's try the basic one here. Um, I'm gonna just try to touch up these pads and I'm gonna go ahead and see if that works. Otherwise, I could just do a straight on donor. See that, that looks nice, right? Just get the ones out a little bit. Now this is only gonna fix, uh, oh, ah, you guys all wanna go together, huh? Solder, solder crowd. Okay, so it looks good, All right? I think we'll go ahead and um, clean it up. At least the connections look to be solid.
All right, so let's see. Um, does this look good enough? Which it does, yep, everything's making contact. You see that? All the pads are actually making a contact there. So it looks to be okay. All right, so let's go ahead and try that. Let's see if it's gonna go ahead and work. Okay, all right, let me get my little extender. Okay, so I got my extender there. Let's go plug it in one side. I do have my um, volume up, so hopefully we'll hear it if it connects, makes a connection. Okay, we heard that, right? Boom, and actually it did pop up. Um, it looks like the data looks to be there. So we can see the, another one. You know what, I just did this. If you notice it says uh, FAT32. I just did another one that said FAT32 as well. I don't know why um, they're selling them. I had a guy come in too who was giving a problem with that on some of the new ones. I don't know if people are buying them. They're coming up that way, but it does show up as FAT32 for a lot of people now for some reason. FAT32 is a much older format and usually is meant for more smaller drives. Uh, XFAT is usually what we do for most people now for compatibility with PC and Mac and for higher storage options. I can see that the USB drive it has data there. I don't want to show the customer's data. There we go. Okay, I could show this. So it doesn't look like there's much there, but we double click it. It looks like there's mainly documents. Okay, so there's a lot of documents. There's some folders there. So uh, we're going to go ahead and recover this, move it over, and then we should be okay. Okay, looks like we backed up the data. Everything looks to be fine. Um, yeah, and that's that's it. So we were pretty lucky there. Um, all we needed to do was just mainly fix the pads. We didn't have to fix anything else. That's a best case scenario for something like this because we do have the donors. In case of that, we would have to get a donor for uh, the head itself here, um, especially when you see a crack there because the, the crack could be more internal. There could be pin damage for that. I'm actually working on another video where, where we replaced the head on it there. If you guys are interested in that, go ahead and check that out. I have lots of other ones on these ones, just doing these. And sometimes the, the head usually needs to be a perfect donor for it. Um, otherwise, it does give a problem if it's not exactly aligned. It needs to align at least perfectly for that. And then you have to be very careful while you do something like that, right? Especially if you're serious about it, you want to make sure that um, go to day recovery place like us, because if there is a problem with this, we can go to the next step, replace the head. If there's a problem with that, they have to go replace the next step, which would be maybe a controller issue, or to see if there's a short around uh, some of the areas, the capacitors, um, something like that, resistors. And the worst case, you go and recover data directly from the NAND itself there. Go ahead and check out our other videos. We show you guys um, how we recover data on uh, more complex issues and more not straightforward issues if you guys are interested in, in seeing that. So, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We'll see you guys next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.